Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great Monday. Uh, we had a great day yesterday and, uh, and worship and then uh, we had some celebrations for me and my birthday and uh, got to, to be with my uh, parents and, and my sister and her husband and uh, it was just a good day. My and then my wife and kids as well. We we just uh, we had a good time together, and then was with some extended family on uh, over Zoom. We just it was a good day, a good day of celebration and all. And uh, but uh, just thank the Lord for for that. Thank the Lord for my family. They're so good to me, such a blessing. I'm just thankful for each one of them. Well, let's uh, dig into Ruth chapter four today. We'll read the first ten verses and. Uh, uh, some some interesting stuff here, kind of different stuff, and so we'll read it and, and dig into it a little bit more. Uh, this is, the title of this in the Bible says, it says, Boaz marries Ruth. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat down there just as the guardian redeemer he had mentioned came along. Uh, remember, the, there was another one, uh, another one that was closer and really had first uh, right of refusal uh, to uh, taking care of, of Ruth and Naomi and that kind of thing. So it says, meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate, sat down there just as the guardian redeemer he had mentioned came along. Uh, Boaz said, come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town and said, sit here, and they did so. Then he said to the guardian redeemer, Naomi has come back from Moab, is selling the, the piece of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here, in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, uh, do, do so. But if you will not, tell me, so I will know, for no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. I will redeem it, he said. Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with, the, with his property. At this, the guardian redeemer said, Then I cannot redeem it, because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Now, in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the, the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. So the guardian redeemer uh, said to Boaz, buy it yourself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian, and Mal Malon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite, Malon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that, this is, this, so that his name will not disappear from among his family and from his hometown. Today, you are witnesses. Uh, there's some kind of strange stuff here. Uh, our notes section dives into it a little bit more. So let's go to that, and then we'll come back to the questions at the end. Uh, called to order, Ruth 4 gives perspective into the ways God works through suffering for good. His outcomes often surprise us and fill us with great joy uh, beyond what we could have asked or, or asked for or imagined. Uh, you know, that's so, so true. Sometimes we, you know, things happen. We don't understand why they happen. Uh, and yet God brings good out of them. He works and moves in ways we, we can't understand it, but it's always for, always for our good, always for our blessing. And so we just trust him and, uh, you know, we just endure whatever it is we have to endure because he is, He's faithful and he's good. This so chapter 4 opens with Boaz at the town gate, ready to legally accomplish redemption for Naomi and Ruth. At this time in Israel, everything happened at the town gate. Israel's ancient cities were very crowded. Uh, they lacked large open spaces like the Roman Forum or the Greek Agora. Uh, so the town gate served as the courtroom of that day. At this place, justice was dispensed and people's contracts were made in and witness this is this is the courthouse this is where they went when they needed decisions to be made and they uh, just kind of did it in this way kind of different but but uh, it's just the way that they had it set up Boaz arrives at this gate just as the man with a closer claim as guardian redeemer comes into view and Boaz probably has all this planned out uh, you know he's going to do this in a certain way and, and all this happens this is after Boaz calls him over he gathers legal witnesses court is now in session this is a legal proceeding as Boaz proceeds with his wise plan of, of action. And it, again, it all uh, is in the way that God had sort of established in, in his, his word. And, uh, you know, Boaz is wanting to do this on the up and up. He'd be very careful to make sure all of his, uh, you know, his I's are dotted and his T's are crossed kind of thing. The next section is his test of the heart. 
First, Boaz describes Naomi's need as an opportunity for this near relative to gain the land from our relative Elimelech. He encourages the man to decide right then to redeem it. Boaz makes clear, if you'll not, I'll do it. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't have to because I've got, you know, uh, all this going on. Uh, he says the closer relative leaps at the opportunity to add Elimelech's land to his own at a little cost. He, he thinks, hey, this is a good opportunity for me. I'm going to do this. So Boaz takes the next step in his plan. He tests the true motives of the man. As verse 5 records, Boaz adds, On the day you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, uh, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with, with his property. And so, you know, maybe this other man wasn't aware of that or, or whatever. Boaz says, hey, this, this may be a little harder on you than you think. You, you, you need to make sure you re- this is something you really want to do. Uh, and there again, I think there's probably a little bit of tongue-in-cheek there with Boaz because he, he, he wants this to all happen uh, so badly. He says, without hesitation, the man replies, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. Uh, marriage to Ruth will likely produce sons to honor Elimelech's name. They would dilute his other son's inheritance. Uh, so by saying that the cost is too high, the man shows he's thinking only of his own own gain, only what's in it for him, not of God's purpose to honor family and, and to protect the poor. Uh, he's, he's focusing on himself, what, what hurt, what pain might come to him. Uh, he wants what only out of it what he can get. And so he wants to, you know, he says, I, I can't do it. And probably this is all part of, you know, like I said, this is probably all part of Boaz's plan to, to you know, uh, to be able to marry uh, Ruth and, and all of this. And so uh, kind of an interesting way this is all, all happens. He returns the offer to Boaz. You, you redeem it yourself. What the man rejects is a personally risky endeavor, you know, too much, too hard for him to do. Uh, Boaz receives as a, as a surprising delight. Uh, this is just what he had hoped. His dreams are coming true, so to speak. Boaz immediately redeems Ruth at a cost to himself that the closer the the closer relative refused to pay. Uh, you know, Boaz is is going to take care of them. Boaz's motive is to honor Elimelech's name and his family and in Bethlehem, uh, unknown then, but certainly part of God's plan. The one and only Redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, would descend through Boaz's faithful zeal for doing right before God and and people. Uh, in other words, you know, Jesus is going to come through the family line here of, of Boaz and, and Ruth. This is with the community as witnesses, Boaz proclaims the redemption is accomplished. Both Ruth the Moabite, or Ruth the Moabite is now his wife. The celebration of Boaz's marriage to Ruth and redemption of Naomi begin. Uh, this is the beginning of, of a great time. This is kind of the official uh, kind of part of the, you know, going down to the courthouse kind of thing. And, and now they can have a wedding. Uh, and it says, a time to rejoice. A great truth echoes from this town gate through the generations. Praise and joy resound uh, wherever redemption is accomplished. And as we know to be true in our own communities, in bad and good times, God's people sing. As God inspired King David to affirm believers' laments through his psalms. How much more we enjoy God's inspiration to celebrate his amazing grace to ultimately overcome his people's suffering with good. Uh, it, 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 you know, God's blessing always brings a song, it seems like, uh, always brings joy, always brings celebration. And that's what we'll see, you know, as we move through this further into this passage. Now, uh, looking at it, the questions for today, I think they kind of wrap it up pretty well. It says, what interest or surprise, what interest or surprises you most about the way Boaz accomplished his plan and why? I mean, it's a pretty strange deal, right? This whole handing of the, the sandal and, and all that stuff, uh, you know, bringing people, other people in to witness everything. And it, it's hard for us to, to understand other than just to say, yeah, that's just the way they did it. And so, you know, it's, it's interesting to me anyway that they would do it this way. Why would they do it? Well, I don't know. Part of it was tradition. Part of it is the way God set it up. Uh, but the ultimate idea is that it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. And, uh, you know, the ultimate result is what, what's important because Boaz uh, redeems Ruth and, and Naomi and, and takes care of them. Uh, and, and like I said, it's a, a beautiful part of this. Now, the, the next question I, I think is good. It's, it's interesting. It says, looking back to Ruth, one, why is Boaz's marriage to Ruth a surprising outcome? Uh, what event in your life can you look back on today to see a surprising outcome? 
I, I think about, you know, how, you know, sometimes how we go back to the beginning of Ruth's story and, and I mean, she's not even part of the story, right? Naomi and, and her family leave uh, Bethlehem and, and they go to Moab and they go to a foreign country and uh, all this, something they really probably shouldn't have done. Uh, but they did. And, and then, uh, you know, Elimelech passes away and then the two sons pass away. And, and uh, uh, you know, you think of just the, the hopelessness there that there was for Naomi. She's empty. She's bitter. Uh, all these bad things. And yet now she's come back home. Uh, she's brought Ruth with her. And, uh, you know, the beautiful scene is played out now. And, and essentially Boaz and Ruth are married and Boaz is going to take care. Of, you know, they'll take care of Naomi. And the name is continued, and there's blessing and celebration. And wow, what a difference it, it makes. We never know how God is going to work in our life, and, and He just has a way of doing that. And I, uh, I think uh, maybe back to the time when our, before our family came here to Mount Carmel, we were, we were unsure where the Lord was leading us, how things were going to go, where we were going to go. Uh, and then just the Lord all of a sudden brought out this opportunity for us to be the pastor here. And we're in our ninth year here now. And uh, God has blessed us. And, and we're so thankful for our church family and, and all of that. And, and God is good. And, and so, you know, we always look at it's, it's you know, sort of some, not surprising because God is good. God is faithful and we trust him. We look to him. But, uh, you know, it, it is different. We don't, you know, we didn't, we wouldn't, at the beginning, we couldn't foresee all of this and, in Ruth and Naomi and Boaz's life, and yet God knew all along what He was going to do, and He He brought it about, and it's really a a, a beautiful beautiful thing that He does. Well, let's wrap up this uh, this time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this story. We thank you for how you work, not just in the story, but in our lives, uh, to bring about your good and perfect will, to bring about uh, times of celebration. Oh, there may be times of of uh, emptiness, of, of suffering in between, you know, but you bring us through those things. As we talked about yesterday in the sermon, we, you know, you are faithful and good. And, and, and when we are afraid, you are f a faithful companion to help us through those things. And we come out the other side stronger and more, uh, have a deeper faith and a deeper love for you, Lord. Help us in that. Help us to to seek you and to turn our eyes upon you and, and recognize our help is on the way, as we sang yesterday. Uh, you are so good and so faithful. And we just praise your name today, Lord. Again, thank you for this lesson for us. Uh, thank you for Ruth and Boaz and how you brought them together and, and, and used Boaz to redeem uh, these two ladies, Lord. We just praise you for that. Lord, uh, we lift up those that are in need today, those that need encouragement, those that may be struggling. Uh, Lord, visit them, bless them, uh, carry them through whatever storm there is they're going through, Lord. Uh, we lift up all those that are sick, all those that are dealing with COVID, Lord. There's so many. And we just lift them to you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence with us every day. Uh, your transforming presence, Lord, it makes such a difference when you are with us, when we recognize your presence with us and the change you want to bring to us. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, we just give you praise. Just ask your blessing on each one today. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all this. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, a little more from Ruth, but uh, you have a great rest of your day and we'll, uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.